Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Good Sight Christian Church. You know, this church, it's, uh, it's full of sinners. It's an old-fashioned word, isn't it, that? Um, but it's full of sinners who have met with Jesus, and many of us have had life-changing experiences. Do you remember when you came to the Lord Jesus? When you, when you became a follower, a Christian, as an 11-year-old, as a 15-year-old? In a, on a camp, on a holiday mission, holiday club. I, I was 11. I was once 11 <laughs> um, when I just became a Christian, just with my mum in the bedroom after listening to a after a kids meeting. And it's taken a while for me, but. It's just taken a while for Jesus to have control in my life, and now and again I have off days. But maybe I haven't had that experience yet. But don't be alarmed or afraid. Everyone, the Bible says, are born in sin. It's a horrible word, I know, but it's, it's and we sin so easily. But we're here today. This is a rescue center. This is a place where God can rescue us. So just be aware of that as we sing our first song. Give thanks to the Lord, his love endures forever. I'm going to stand after the introduction and sing the lovely song together. and be reminded that God is faithful. Psalm 145, page 631 in the Church Bible. Try and just focus on this just for a second. Psalm 145, 
and it's verse 13b. Part, part of the verse, okay? Here we go. Page 631 in the Church Bible. Okay, Psalm 145, verse 13, and it's at the end of verse 13, it's the second part of the verse, and it says, The Lord is faithful to all His promises. He's promised to be with us, He's promised to, to, to help us go through the situations and the, and, the, and the problems. The Lord is faithful to all His promises and loving towards all He has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall. David's written this. Psalm 145. David's written this. And he's one of the guys in the Bible that fell, and he fell so far that you, you wouldn't have thought he'd been able to come back up again. And I know there are some in church who are just struggling because things have happened and, and there doesn't seem to be a way out. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. We're getting to it now. It's verse 18 is a key verse. But verse 17 leads us into it. Verse 17 is just going to help us as we pray. There's a, there's a little keynote here that David's bringing. He says, the Lord is righteous in all his ways. If we're going to come to him with our prayers, we have to recognise that. And loving towards all he has made. Here's the verse, here's the key verse, I think that will help us. Sometimes when we feel far away from God or we feel our prayers aren't being answered. The Lord is near to all who call on him. That's the first bit. He's not far away from you. If you feel far away, maybe that is, that is your situation to put right. And I point the finger here as well. The Lord is near to all who call on him. But look what, look what David says. And I reckon, I reckon David had prayed sometimes and it wasn't a truthful prayer. I don't know that, but I just reckon that. Because this is what he says. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. When we pray, we've got to be absolutely truthful. Not just our agenda, not just things that we see, the way we see it. We've got to be absolutely truthful. And I would just say as a, an older, older than middle-aged, mature Yorkshireman, that is sometimes hard to, hard to be truthful. Because you get set in your ways, and sometimes you've, you've lived that way, and sometimes it's just hard to change. I say it from my heart, if you're really struggling for answered prayer, we have to go to God in all righteousness and truthfulness. And that isn't easy, but it's possible. And on that, let's just... Let's just turn to God in prayer. Father, we know that you are a forgiving God. And whatever the problem is, whatever the situation is, we can come to you because when we call to you, as we just read, you are near to us. And sometimes we want, we want to be nearer to you. So whatever the problem is, or whatever the situation is, within our family, within our home, within our difficulty, we cry out to you today as a church, <coughs> as individuals. And we thank you that in the words that we just sung, that you are a faithful God. And we want to praise you for that. You don't turn away just when things go wrong and when we're struggling. You are there for us. Sometimes we can't see you for the situation, for the mist, for the fog. 
for the circumstances. We thank you for going to the cross. We thank you for the life-changing experience that many of us in church have had when we bowed before you and we asked you to come into our lives and to forgive us our sins, and you did that. And you paid the price to redeem us, to buy us back from our sins. So we give thanks for that. We just pray today that you'll help Wesley. We, we give thanks for his journey to us. We pray, our Father God, for this, uh, the number of people here today. We thank you for Lucy, who has just come today. We just we thank you. It's lovely to see her. We just pray that she'll be able to rejoice too in being with us. And for others, maybe too numerous to mention, we give thanks. And just pray that today will be a day that marks a real change in our following you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. to come here as a youngster and I recognise some of the folks who used to be here and we're all so much older don't we in fact I remember being here when I was 18 and this was the the beginning and the end of my music career 
Because <laughs> I came and I sang a song and my sister played the guitar uh, and I decided that day that this wasn't the gift that the Lord had given me. Um, but it's associated with this place. And it's always a joy to come back to, to Cutside and it's lovely to see everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, and uh, we've been thinking about some good news, haven't we? In fact, it's more than good news. It's the best news that you are going to hear today, this week, this year, for the rest of your life. It doesn't get better than the news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I like a bit of audience participation, by the way. <laughs> I have a granddaughter. She's four now. I have a grandson and another little granddaughter, just a tiny little baby. But I love to watch my grandchildren growing up. And uh, uh, when she was about three, she learned a phrase which I absolutely loved. She came out with it one day, and it really made me laugh. She said this, Woohoo! <laughs> Do you know, when I think about the love of God and the mercy of God and the grace of God and that I stand before you as someone who's forgiven for all of my sins and that I have a friend that sticks closer than a brother, the Lord Jesus, and I know I'm on my way to heaven, it makes me want to say, Woohoo! We can do better than that. Let's try that again. There's a lot of people here. Ready? One, two, three. Woohoo! And if you want to add to that, praise the Lord, I don't mind that as well. Praise the Lord. What a joy, eh? It's good to be saved. It's good to be forgiven. It's good to be on God's side. He's changed everything for me. And I just give him all the glory and all the praise. I want to talk to you this morning about a few guys who uh, I've encountered in my life. We're involved with a work in, over in Stockport near Manchester. It, it's a work with a charity called Renewal Northwest. Uh, and, and I just want to show you some slides very, very quickly through this uh, and just talk about some of these characters and maybe talk about a verse that's uh, in, in my presentation. So if we could have that, I think it's on blank. There it is. Great stuff. And so we all, always want to st start with God's word. Uh, and these are verses which are very precious to me. And I might hopefully get some time just to speak about that first one there. It's found in Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19. And the Lord Jesus is in the synagogue at Nazareth and he is declaring what his manifesto is. Now, this is a unique manifesto. You won't see any politicians uh, around today with a manifesto like this. And you certainly won't find politicians who keep their manifesto. But I'll tell you something about the Lord Jesus. He gave his manifesto and do you know what? He fulfilled every single bit of it to the last letter, and he's still doing it today. And I give thanks for God to God for that, because he is able to do that. And this is what it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus talking about himself. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel or the good news to the poor. And that isn't just people who are poor materially, but this is people who are poor in spirit, people who are broken, people who know they've got a problem, people who know there's something missing in their life and they need some help. Jesus came for them. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. I wonder this morning, is there anyone here who's brokenhearted? Your life's in a mess. You've had enough. You're struggling to get through each day. And maybe you're resorting to different things to cope with that. I know that. I get that. I see that all the time in the work that we do. Deep pain, sorrow. Maybe something done to you in the past. Maybe some bad relationships, some bad encounters, some difficult situations, some things that you're struggling with in your life. Jesus came to heal the broken-hearted. You say, how do you know that? Because I've seen it. Time and time again, he heals the broken-hearted. He brings deliverance to the captive. I wonder today, someone here this morning, you're held bound by something, some addiction, something got hold of you, some substance, some practice, slipping into that dodgy area of porn. It's dead easy to do that, isn't it? Phil's talked about being honest here this morning. 
when I look at the statistics of people who have fallen foul of pornography, it's shocking. It's everywhere, isn't it? It's on our phones. It's on the telly. It's everywhere, wherever you look. Listen, Jesus Christ brings hope to people who have problems with pornography. Jesus Christ brings hope to people who have all sorts of different issues. You say, how do you know it? Because I know it in my own life. God gives deliverance. He brings salvation. He's hope with the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll set you free. And he brings recovery of sight to the blind. He'll give you spiritual blind. He'll open your eyes to see the wonder of his love, the majesty of his plan for humanity and for the future. He sets at liberty them that are bruised. Are you free? Jesus Christ alone brings freedom. You can only be free in him. Some people come along and they say to me, Wes, I'm free to do what I like. I live as I like. I'll tell you what, you're not. Because that very thing that you feel you're at liberty to do is the very thing that will captivate you and bring you in and draw you in. And I've seen it so many times. Wes, you're boring. You live your life by the Ten Commandments. You're boring, mate. You can't do what you like. Listen, I'll tell you what. I thank God for the Ten Commandments. I thank God for all that he's outlined in his word as the Holy Spirit empowers me to endeavour to live like that for his glory because that's what keeps me free. Jesus keeps me free. If the truth shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. It's the truth that sets you free. And as we've been hearing today, this morning, Jesus is the truth. He sets you free to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And we won't just look at Isaiah 58, 6, 7, which is another verse that God spoke to us through in relation to the work that we do. But I thank God for that first verse, and that's so relevant for us in our everyday society. Let's just uh, look at some of the things that different people... Here's, here's John Wesley. Is my namesake. Uh, my name's Wesley. It's actually a surname for him, but it's my first name. Uh, and he said this, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever as you can. Put your hand up if you do that. Hmm. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> we all fall short of that. But that's what we set out to do. And that's what it means to love your neighbour as yourself. And when Jesus is in working in your life and the Holy Spirit's empowering you, that's what you want to do, and he'll give you the power to do it. By the way, I love his haircut. <laughs> there was a young lad who was trying to convince his dad. He was a Christian lad, uh, and he was trying to convince his dad that, that he ought to be able to grow his hair long. And his dad said, no, no, just get it cut. He said, but what about John Wesley, dad? <laughs> That is actually a, a picture of John Wesley. And if you go down to Central Hall, Methodist Central Hall in London, uh, there's a little statue. There's a statue of him there. I say a little statue because he's about that, he's about that high, uh, John Wesley. But God used him mightily to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is Alan Kelly. He is with Jesus now. He's gone home to be with the Lord. Put your hands up if you remember the riots in 1990 in Strange Ways, Manchester, I know there's a lot of young people here, but this will show our age, won't it? Put your hands up if you remember it. Do you remember the images on the, on the news? You know, helicopters hovering over. The men on the roof, chucking the tiles down. You know, at the police. Woo! <laughs> Bunch of rogues. Well, one of them was Alan Kelly. On the roof during the Strange Ways riots. Alcoholic. Gangster. Drug dealer. Drug user. Nasty bit of work. Wasn't very nice to his partners. Wasn't very nice to his children. His dad wasn't very nice to him either. I won't tell you what happened. But it was bad. Any hope for him? Any hope? Are you sure about that? One day that man walked into a drop-in in Withenshaw where Alison and I were doing a drop-in centre there. Within half an hour of him being there, he was crying his eyes out. Do you know why? Because he felt so guilty about his sin. All the stuff he'd done. All the wrong things. Big hard man, six foot four. Fought in the Falklands, crying his eyes out. Why? Because God was at work. His conscience was pricked. 
And it was a privilege to tell him that his sins could be forgiven because of what Jesus Christ did for him on the cross of Calvary. Jesus died on that cross in my place as my substitute. And he died in the place of Alan Kelly, which means that Alan Kelly can be forgiven for all his sins. Isn't that amazing, eh? I think we ought to have another woohoo. Woohoo! <laughs> Praise God for that. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Do. God is able to do that. Transform lives because of what we've read, because of what Christ came to do. There is hope for these guys. There is hope for me. Because do you know what? If you knew the sins I'd done in my life, if they were written around the walls of this room, you wouldn't see me for dust. I'd be so ashamed. And I'm being honest with you. But I know today that God has forgiven me. And he's restored me and he's lifted me up and he's given me hope. And yes, like Phil, I get it wrong some days. But I also know God helping me to live my life in a way that honours him and, and gives me victory over sins that once held me bound. And it's only to do with me, but it's to do with him and being willing to submit to him and be willing to let him in and let him lead me and guide me and walking with him. The Bible talks about abiding in him, abiding in the vine. So we draw our sustenance from him. We're closely with him. You know, we've helped guys who, who haven't gone on and who haven't become Christians and, and some of them have even gone back to prison. And some of them have been out of prison, but they've not gone on for Jesus. And, and you know, as I look at the, diff, the guys who went on and really shined for Jesus today, and those that didn't, it's those guys who really loved the Lord and they walked with him and they had a close relationship with him. And when the problems came, they turned to him. And it was intimate, intimate and it was close. And that's the key. Let's move on very, very quickly. This is our shop, Renewal Northwest, in Stockport. If you're over there, come and see us. Uh, and this is some details about the charity. We've been going 18 years. We have 25 staff, about 20 volunteers. And we have a Bible time every morning. And we also have a wonderful coffee, a cafe, where we sell some wonderful coffee. So if you're in Stockport and you want a coffee, Refresh is the name of the cafe. Uh, and you can talk to me about if you're interested in it. We, have, we run a number of projects. We have a community computer project. We refurbish computers. And the guys who come and work for us, uh, some from prison and all sorts of different backgrounds, long-term unemployment, addiction. Um, some of them are involved with refurbishing computers for local councils. We have a house clearance business. We have a coffee house, Renewal Living. We'll talk about that. Renewal Northwest, bringing hope through Jesus Christ. I love that. That's everywhere. That. That's on our building. That's on all our uniforms. And someone once said to me, hey, you're the most politically incorrect charity that you've ever come across. Hallelujah. Because we get the name of Jesus Christ everywhere. We love doing that. I was in a council meeting on, uh, on Friday. And I love to talk about Jesus in that setting. You want to see their faces. <laughs> you can't say that. You can't talk about him. <laughs> I love to talk about him wherever I go because he's changed my life. He's given me hope and he'll give hope to those people who are in the meeting as well. We have a project called Community Appliances. We refurbish appliances. We have an eBay operation where we sell on eBay. Uh, and we, have, we did have a furniture shop. Offices, office furniture has gone out the window these days, but there we are, never mind. Let's just think a little bit about Renewal Living. That's, this is our residential program. People come to us from homelessness, addiction, and offending particularly guys who become Christians in prison, and we help them on their next steps in the Christian life. We meet them at the gate, and we provide them. This is a little bit about uh, renewal living. Have we got volume on this? Is that, uh, I should have mentioned that there was some video there. Renewal Northwest is a registered charity which is set up to provide uh, work experience and skills development uh, and employment for people coming from long-term unemployment. Uh, and those people may be people who are coming from offending backgrounds or people coming from addiction or from homelessness or, or just from a, a life where they've, not, they've been out of work for a long period of time. They've not had opportunities to get employment. And so Renewal Northwest is a, is a charity set up to help them make those connections, to get into work 
but then also is a charity that's set up to help and provide uh, low cost household items to people in Stockport. Um, and then in addition, the other object that Renewal North West has is the furtherance of the Christian faith and to disciple people in living for the Lord Jesus, for his glory. And so those are the, the three main sort of areas that we're, we're working in. We, we, our biggest problem is we don't have enough space to accommodate the number of people we get. So we spend more time turning people away than we do helping people because we don't have a space. We have accommodation for six. This will give us potentially another six. Uh, and it's a house we currently we bought and we're renovating. Uh, and I wanted to show that picture because the church here gave a donation towards that renovation project, which we really, really are thankful for. The need is great. You know, these guys are our brothers in Christ, leaving prison, homeless, and they need our help. And so practical Christianity, you know, faith without works is dead. Uh, if your brother and sister are in need, you help them, don't you? That's what Christians do. And so thank you for supporting us in that. And, and thank you for your interest in the work. And, uh, you know, above all, let's give thanks to God for his amazing grace and the work that he does in our lives to save us and set us free. And, you know, I don't know where you stand, whether you know him, whether you've trusted him, whether you know your sins are forgiven and you set free and you have the peace of God in your heart. If you don't, you are missing out. You've missed the purpose of living, you know, Life without Christ is not life at all. He gives life with a capital L, and he gives hope. So come to him, trust him, talk to someone. Don't put it off, please. Satan, his enemies, demons will whisper into your ears for another day. I'm too young. There's enough going on in my life at the moment without me getting involved in this. I'll do it when I'm older. Don't listen. Don't listen. But believe on the Lord Jesus. Trust him today. The Bible says today, today is the accepted time. No other time, but today, the, this very moment, trust Jesus. Come as you are. He's done the work. You don't need to do anything for salvation. He's done it. You just need to come and trust him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be... Say, Amen. Thank you.